We're about to model the session where you collect teacher barriers and sort them out so we can come up with supports as a group. What you're going to see is the process of collecting the post-its, processing them, and deciding where throughout the sessions today we're going to address those questions. Okay, so at this point we've been collecting post-it notes from the teachers and I've gotten started organizing them. Right now that organization is really just clustered into the topics of questions that we offered up to teachers at the start of this activity. So the topics you're going to see here are the code.org values, teaching practice, course material, website, and other. That's sort of the catch-all for anything else that doesn't fit. So these are the types of questions we solicited, and now what we're going to do is determine which of these questions we can address right now in this uh, barriers activity, and which of these questions are going to naturally be addressed later on in the workshop. I'm going to take you through and show you how I would sort these post-its and talk a little bit about why I'm putting things where I'm putting them. So we're gonna get started here in our values uh, questions. These are questions that I put into the values category when I picked them up from teachers. They didn't necessarily tell me they belong here, uh, but these are related to our values in the classroom. So we've got questions here about including more girls in computer science. We've got a cluster of questions from a couple of people about how to support students who are coming in with different levels of content knowledge. And then we have a question about the role of the teacher and uh, plugged or unplugged lessons, which is better. So to navigate this, I'm going to start by prioritizing the, the place where I have multiple people asking about the same thing. So I've got three people asking about content knowledge. So I'm going to circle that. And I'm going to say that this is a topic we need to talk about as a group. And I know that we don't have another place to do this later in the workshop. So I think this might be a good thing to prioritize in our upcoming jigsaw activity. So I'm going to say um, different content knowledge. So. These are my things related to different content knowledge. I'm gonna ignore the rest of these for right now. I can come back to them in a minute, but uh, including more girls in the class and the role of the teacher and unplugged or plugged lessons, neither of those really have to do with different content knowledge. So we're gonna see if these might fit into a different theme that emerges as we keep going. If we move on to teaching practice, we have a bunch of different questions here. I've got a question here about using unplugged lessons when students are all in different places in the course. A question about keeping English language learner students in the same place as other students. How to integrate with other content areas. How to help students when they get stuck. And someone saying, hey, I don't really know enough computer science content. How can I help my students? So these are all related to the theme of teaching practice. And we're going to take a minute to look here and see how we can combine different uh, questions that are related to one another and therefore could be addressed in our jigsaw. So the first thing that I'm noticing when I look at this is that a question about unplugged lessons maybe isn't actually about teaching practice. This could be about tools in our website. So I'm actually going to take this post-it and make the executive decision as the facilitator that even though this was listed before as teaching practice, this is really a question about keeping kids in the same place in the course. And the best way to do that is by better understanding how the website works. So I'm going to move this over to the website website category and come back to it when I get when I get to that. Now I'm back in my teaching practice section. I've got four post-its here and I need to make a decision about which of these I might want to address here in this barriers section session and which might be addressed naturally later on in the day. So for example, I am pretty confident that a conversation about integrating uh, with other content matter, this can come out in our lesson planning time. That's a big focus of lesson planning, and I know that because I'm familiar with the workshop agenda. So I'm going to put this down here below the squiggly line, and I'm just going to make a note to myself that that should come out in lesson planning. I have another question here about helping my students when they get stuck. 
That sounds to me a lot like debugging. And I know that we have a whole session later in the workshop about debugging. So I'm going to move that down here. And I'm going to just make a note that it will be addressed during debugging. That's leaving me with two different post-its left here about teaching practice, one about supporting English language learner students, and one about uh, addressing a lack of CS content knowledge. I think that we could open up this category we made over here about different content knowledge and say, this is about different content knowledge coming in plus diverse learning needs, because those are really related. And I can move this over. So, I'm going to say learning needs plus different content knowledge. And this is one bucket. Now I have a topic left here in teaching practice about how to navigate teaching the course when you still don't have a lot of content knowledge. I'm going to leave that on its own for right now and see if we have more post-its down the line that might contribute to this and come back to it later. As a reminder, at this point, we're really just trying to come up with our four different areas that each group is going to explore for our lesson jigsaw that comes up later. Let's move on to course materials for now. So we've got four questions here about course materials. Lots of them are about where stuff lives. So we've got a question here. Are there lesson plans? I've been using the 2017 curriculum guide. That sounds like someone who needs to better understand our resources. And I happen to know, because I'm familiar with the workshop, that there's a session later on, a scavenger hunt, where people are going to have room to actually dig in and see where all of these materials live. So I'm going to move that below the line, because I know it will happen later. And I'm going to label it scavenger hunt. Question here, I'm struggling with a lesson in course C. Please advise. Well, that's something that definitely can come out in lesson planning. So I'm going to move that below the line as well, because lesson planning is a time to get into some lessons. That would be a great thing to do there. So I'm going to label that as lesson planning. It means we don't have to do it during uh, this activity right now, but we can still get answers. Question here about standards that CSF maps to, or standards that CSF uh, covers. That's another thing that we can find in the scavenger hunt. So I'm going to add that down here. And then a last question that's left is that I started my kids on the express course a month ago, but they're already bored. Well, that's something that we could address in a lot of different ways. And maybe we want to talk about this directly during our, our upcoming activity about barriers, because this sounds like a pretty, uh, a pretty loaded or, or deep uh, problem that they're encountering. This isn't something that's just surface level. It's something that we could really dig into and talk a lot about. So I'm going to leave that there as a potential topic for our jigsaw activity and move on to, to decide what we want to do with it. Takes us to our next category, which is website. Typically, most things in the website are going to be covered later in the session. Um, and that's because we have, we have these sessions in the workshop specifically focused on understanding how materials are organized and how you use them. So to get started with this, uh, we've got a question here that says, what types of student logins should I use with my second graders? That's a perfect thing to uncover in the scavenger hunt. So I'm going to put that below the line and say that you'll get answers to that in the scavenger hunt. There's a question about keeping students in the same spot. I think that's really related to the question before about how to use unplugged lessons when students are all over the place in the course. So I'm going to cluster those together. There's a question here about tracking students who are pair programming. Later on in the model lesson, we're actually going to use the pair programming tool. So teachers will get to see this. So I'm going to put that below the line. Um, and label it that it will be addressed in the model lesson. And then using the website is confusing. How do I easily navigate code.org? Well, this is a big focus of the scavenger hunt, is answering questions about how to navigate the website. So I know that that's going to be addressed down here. So that leaves just these two items about that are relatively short in how they're written, but they're about pretty deep questions, which is, how do I actually like teach the class so students stay in the same place. This is a really common question that comes out, and it comes out in a lot of different ways, but that's the underlying question is, what pedagogy can I use to keep people together so meaningful instruction can happen? So I'm going to circle these and keep them together. 
And I'm going to say uh, that this is about the role of the teacher plus keeping students together. All right, this takes us to our final category, the catch-all category called other. When we get to the other category, we are going to look back at everything we've done up to now to see if any of these things slot in nicely with what we've already uh, with what we've already clustered together. And if they don't, we'll start making some new categories. As a reminder, we're trying to come up with four sort of circled buckets that we're going to address in this upcoming jigsaw activity. And so far we've identified two. So we're really looking for two more. To get started, I've already clustered these three together because I saw them while I was collecting the post-its from teachers. These questions are all about helping people understand the value of computer science, getting buy-in with a special focus on administrators. So uh, this seems like a common question that we're really going to want to figure out how to address. Um, and I'm also seeing some other questions that weren't originally put with this that feel like they might be a good fit. So as an example, this question says, my grade band team doesn't like that I'm doing something different, but parents are really excited. How do I get other teachers on board? This is really about buy-in, right? So we're gonna put that up with the question about administrator buy-in, and that's gonna be one of our groups. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and circle this because I know that's gonna be important. You can't teach a class if you don't have buy-in from the other people in your school. So that's definitely one of our categories and we're gonna call it buy-in. Beyond that, I'm seeing some questions here about time. All three of these post-its are needing time for class, uh, other subject areas taking all of your time. So. Um, I'm going to put these together and say that we have a bucket here about time. And actually, I also see a post-it here that says, we only have one computer lab and I can't get it scheduled regularly. This is kind of related to time. This is about time and access. So I am going to expand this category to be time plus access and put these together. So if we zoom out now and look across all of our buckets, we should have things living in circles or things that are below the line. We shouldn't have these one-off post-its. And when we do have one-off post-its left, we need to find either places where they should live or we need to identify that these are things that need to go onto the question parking lot and we need to give time to at the very end of the day. So we're gonna do that pass right now. I see a total of three post-it notes that don't have a home just yet. I'm gonna grab them and I'm going to figure out where these fit into things. So getting support outside of the workshop, this is really like a question of community, I think. And when I scan the themes that I have so far, I'm not seeing community as a big one here yet. So I'm gonna put this down in other and I'm gonna say parking lot. And parking lot doesn't mean we're not gonna do it. It means we're gonna do it during the dedicated time in the workshop to clear the parking lot. Um, questions about student engagement. I think this is sort of related to the role of the teacher. So I'm gonna cluster that together. And then there's a question about CS content and helping students. I'm gonna also throw this down into the parking lot because that's something where I think there are lots of resources that other teachers in the room might have ideas about. So at this point, we have processed all of our post-it notes. We have identified the four categories of, of questions that we'll use during our lesson jigsaw, and we're ready to move into that. So we've just gone through how you collect and sort the post-it notes in order to inform our jigsaw activity that comes next. This is the time where we're really deciding how to address the questions that teachers came into the workshop with, and we're figuring out the best way to get them the answers that they need. 